The Old Testament reading for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost, proper 14, is from Job chapter 38. The Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I make, made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to, to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. When the wicked, their light is withheld and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? The gates of death have been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know all this. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. The righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the, the word of the faith of faith that we proclaim, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. The scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call to him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. They have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory be to thee. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please be seated. I'm tired. 
between selling a house and finding another one, dealing with countless emails from realtors and lenders, signing documents, checks, contracts, inspections for termites, for the house inspection, for the AC and furnace, packing up boxes, driving forth, back and forth every other week from here in Des Moines. And in the midst of all that, to top it all off, most of my books are still in boxes somewhere in Ankeny. So thankfully, Pastor Hewen's been most gracious in loaning me any books that I need, but you don't know how hard it is for a pastor not to have his books. But I'm still learning the ropes here and how things work, how things work day to day. I'm still learning where all the shut-ins are and how to get there. So you can imagine I'm kind of tired. But it's a good tired. Last week we heard of Jesus feeding the 5,000. He had initially gone away to be alone in a deserted place after he learned of the death of John the baptizer. But he didn't find any rest because the crowds followed him. He didn't get upset. He didn't try and send them away prematurely. Instead, we're told Jesus had compassion on them but still rest eluded him. Now after the feeding of the 5,000 and the disciples picked up the 12 baskets full of the broken pieces, he sends his disciples on ahead of him to the other side of the lake and he dismissed the crowd. But then what does he do? Our text tells us he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by that time, we're told that the boat the disciples were in was a long way off, and they were bucking a strong wind. So you could probably imagine that the disciples are a bit tired at this point, too. They'd been at the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus gave them the bread and the fish, and they distributed it to the people. And then they went around and picked up the baskets full. And now they're trying to sail across the lake, bucking that strong wind, because without an 80 horsepower mercury motor, outboard motor, it's probably taking a lot of work. And so Jesus comes to them walking on the water, and they're terrified by what they see. They thought they saw a phantom, a ghost. But Jesus reassures them. He says, Take heart, I am. Do not be afraid. Bring on St. Peter, then. Good old, impulsive St. Peter. He wants to know for sure if it's Jesus, and he wants to walk on the water to him. And so Jesus gives the word, and St. Peter walks on the water. But he sees the wind, and he's afraid. And he begins to sink. But Jesus reaches out his hand and grabs him. We all know this story from Sunday school and VBS. It's one of the more well-known stories in our biblically illiterate culture. But think about it for just a second. What, what, what is going on here? People walking on water? People don't walk on water? Well, except maybe Pastor Hewen and I have walked on water before. I have. Ice fishing. <laughs> I've driven my car on water. Maybe St. Peter would, find, would have found his faith to be stronger in the winter. <laughs> but first we hear the disciples are afraid because they thought they saw a ghost. Then Peter is afraid because he sees the wind. What are you afraid of today? What makes you to doubt? Maybe you're tired. You're preoccupied with 
things at home or at work that bring about a lot of stress. Maybe you hear about what's going on between our nation and North Korea, and you have family members in the armed forces, and you're wondering what's going to happen. You've got health issues that you're dealing with, desperately hoping that the doctors can give some kind of relief and healing. School is gearing up again. There are parents and children, some that are excited, and some that are nervous or even scared. We've all got a lot on our plate, no matter what our age. We see and hear things going on in our lives and the lives of others, and frankly, it just gets a little exhausting. So how do we deal with all that? Do we pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, tighten our belts, grin and bear it, slam a cup of coffee and get to work? That might be a great work, work ethic. But how much do you rely on yourself before the fear of this world and of the demonic forces that work against you? How long until it seizes you with terror? If you cast your burdens nowhere, how long will it be until the cares of this world overwhelm you and you begin to sink? So it's easy for us to cast criticisms upon St. Peter because he started to sink. That he took his eyes off Jesus. But Peter did do one thing right. He cried out, Lord, save me. He cried out to the only person he could. But we don't always do that, do we? At least, not until things get really bad. Until we're already sinking in the mire and worry, doubt, sin, and evil. Then maybe we'll cry out, Martin Luther wrote to a friend of his once, there is no news except that Satan is beginning to feel secure because we are slumbering and are slothful in prayer. Let me read that again. There is no news except that Satan is beginning to feel secure because we are slumbering and are slothful in prayer. Whatever you're worried about, whatever it is that keeps you up at night, whatever it is that brings about doubts in your mind, that's God's way of showing you what you need to pray for, why you need to cry out, Lord, save me. For he has saved you. You've been brought into the ship of the church through holy baptism, and you are safe from the wind and the waves, from the demonic and worldly forces that attack you. They might take all of your stuff. They might even take your life. What of it? The kingdom of heaven is yours, where moth and rust do not destroy. When the Lord Jesus and St. Peter got into the boat, those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. They made the good confession of who Jesus is. For they had received all good things from him who saved them. Not just from the wind and the waves, but the same as he saves you on Calvary, where he reaches out his hands to have them nailed to the cross. For in his death, you are put to death in baptism. In his resurrection, you are brought to new life, brought forth from those waters. And you are covered in the righteousness of Jesus. It's in him that you have rest. Here, in this place, within these sacred walls, 
you have rest. For here, you receive from Jesus what he won for you. Here he comes to you and says, Take heart, I am, do not be afraid. In Jesus, all doubts are banished. For he not only walked on water and calmed the storm, he rose from the dead and trampled under his nail-pierced feet both death and devil. So you who are at rest in Jesus can also make the good confession, truly you are the Son of God. So for right now, all the worries of life, your long list of things to do, your issues with your health, of loneliness, of stress, of uncertainty, for right now, just be. at the feet of Jesus who gives you rest and refreshment. If sleep eludes you because of these things, pray to him about those things and have no fear of them. And even if sleep doesn't elude you, pray about these things in your own life and for others. Jesus wants you to pray. He wants you to not be afraid, for there's nothing to fear. He's conquered and won the victory for you, and you are forgiven. Nothing can separate you from his love, not even death. No matter how much the devil, the world, or your own sinful flesh rave against your faith, no matter, Jesus bids your fear to cease. So you don't have to walk on water, not even in the wintertime. Just be here, where Jesus comes to you in the boat of his church. He comes to you with all good things, with forgiveness, with healing, and with blessing. Reaching out his nail-pierced hands to save you. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which surpasses understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.